Have I ever told you the story of Einar the Lonely? No? And Snowfrieder, the beautiful young girl who was dying? It all happened in a Gimli we no longer know. I'm so happy that Gimli is going to be making its world premiere in 4K at TIFF. Yeah, I know it's amazing. Um, long ago, it was um, well, it was the beginning of my friendship with um, with uh, Pierce Handling and Kay Armitage and Jeff Pavier, who were on the selection committee that um, rejected the film back in 1988. So, <laughs> yes. uh, and Pierce, sweetheart that he is, uh, never failed to mention what he felt was a mistake. Uh, in rejecting the film whenever he introduced me on stage for one of the subsequent films I made. Really unnecessary of him to do that, but he brought it up right till the last time when, you know, just before retiring. I'm not so sure it was a mistake rejecting the film, but... Oh my goodness. I think it would have blown people's minds. Guy, there is nothing like your films. Nothing <laughs> like your films. And to Thank see you. that when your first feature was just such an incredible experience. And, uh, you know, you use the silent film techniques and the, that music that I find kind of terrifying to begin with, and you put it in a, a kind of universe that is terrifying at times. Oh, so, good. I'm so glad to hear that. I, yeah. Maybe I was almost making a genre picture. It's uh, the trouble with my movies has always been, they're hard to classify and that's, uh, an absolute nightmare for a distributor. I'm a nightmare for a distributor anyway, but luckily Ron Mann came along and had films we like and decided to restore this. But but yeah, we were wondering, we had to fill out the entry form for TIFF and we were wondering what genre it was. And I think it was a choice between horror and drama and we just went with drama, you know, I don't know. But their categories are so basic. Yeah. But yeah, exactly. But the thing is, you you get into it, and you know, you're seeing something, as I said, that's untouched. No one has done anything like that. Right. So well, you're on your own. Um, yeah. Which is a pretty cool place to be in film when there's so many filmmakers in the world. It felt good, you know, when people would say, I, I just don't even know how to classify your, your film. I'd go, well, thank you. And they'd say, well, that's not necessarily a good thing, you know, but... Uh, <laughs> But I, I, I thought it was good because I sort of came to filmmaking from reading. And to me, if I encountered a book, unlike anything I'd ever encountered before, that was often a great thing, you know. So I was happy to make these things that were many things at once or nothing at all. <laughs> but uh, whatever they were, they were, they were, you know, they'd remind people of things, but everybody sort of scrambled to describe to describe them and that that felt pretty good to me and in subsequent films as well now um the when you were working on the film paid for in part by tiff might i add um on the remaster were you kind of flooded with memories of of being that hopeful filmmaker or being scared or being yeah jubilant it's, even even just re-watching a movie, I, I, I don't re-watch my old stuff very often, but oh my God, when I do, and while well, working on this, you know, I'd be working with the color grader, you know, to make sure each shot had the right contrast, the right degree of darkness or lightness and everything. And while talking to him, I would often just remember out loud things that had happened or, to the people in the frame or how my relationship with them changed later. And it, a lot of this stuff was shot 34, 35, 36 years ago. And uh, um, I first started shooting in June of 1986. It took me about 18 months to shoot a little, pay for the processing, edit a little, then shoot a little more, have a dream, include that in the script, shoot a little <laughs> more, uh, think of a gag, shoot that. You know, my shooting days were often uh, 20 minutes long only, but uh, I was always just sort of picking away at it. And I really liked that way of making films. And I subsequently learned that Jim Jarmusch made um, Stranger Than Paradise that way, shooting only on weekends spread out over a year or 18 months or something like that. And there's a, there's a real sense to it, especially at the beginning of your career when you don't quite know what you're doing. 
um, in just feeling your organic way, one little grasp at a time. And, mm -hmm. But to answer your question, yes. Uh, and even, even the end credits read like a necrology to me. Not that everyone's <laughs> dead. Some, some people have passed away. Oh, dear. And, uh, you know, when you start, you know, because it was three decades, over three decades ago, almost four decades ago. But you can't help but feel a, a surge of melancholy while looking at the, this list of names, not just the actors in it, but even the technicians that helped you, crew members, uh, the post-production people, certain labs, certain people whose guts you hated because they lied to you about the kind of film stock they're printing it on. And then they, but then you subsequently became friends. Um, I don't know, just the long journey that, that I've I, have deliriously you taken since, since I made this film. Yeah. So yes. And, and, and while you make a film, your attitude vacillates wildly between utter hubris and a feeling that, that your camera is, is, and your brain form an axis around which the entire world rotates. <laughs> and then other, other days when you feel like a worthless piece of trash and the truth is somewhere in between, but probably closer to the piece of trash end of that uh, <laughs> pendulum swing, you know? So it's, yeah, yeah, all that stuff comes back to you and it's it's pretty remarkable. It's like Emotional. one big Proust's Madeline, you know? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> that's amazing you talk about well maybe a gag would come to you and that's the other thing that our our description of the film earlier didn't include it's hilariously funny absurdity is, and surrealism that that runs through you know your film work yeah and so we've got to give it its due um I was wondering if you've been in touch with any of the surviving cast members or 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 crews to tell them what's happening yeah, I, a, a, a small number. Um, the um, one of them, the big chubby guy, Mike Gottley, passed away a few years ago. Uh, but Kyle McCullough, who's the male lead, uh, told me he was going to come to oh, the screen wow. today as a surprise. But he just came down with COVID. So oh. the irony is that um, and and the latest epidemic has has prevented him from attending the. Um, the premiere of our first film together about the epidemic in Gimli. And uh, Angela Heck, wow. who was the female lead, and Donna Soki, who's the musical number um, uh, starlet uh, and the costume designer. They're coming, they're gonna come. Oh, how wonderful, and, how wonderful. Yeah, and I've told a few other people about it too that worked on it. I've sent them, you know, copies of the poster and, um, you know, things like that. And, That's uh, great. I'm yeah. sure they would really want to know about it and have the chance to take part. Yeah, uh, and some of them live in Winnipeg, so they won't be, be able to come to TIFF, but they'll, um, the film will come to Winnipeg soon. And yeah, you know, see it yeah. There. Oh, I can't wait for it to, to see it in a, in a theater again. That's where I saw it initially. Oh, wow. Right. I don't remember anyone laughing, and I remember the film having a very high walkout rate. Um, you know, I remember... <laughs> flying over to the Netherlands for a film festival and I I got you know you, you know you go to Europe it's a flight from Winnipeg to Toronto Toronto to Amsterdam and then a car, a car ride to some small film festival somewhere and about you know about 19 people show up to the screening and before the movie's 10 minutes old 12 of them have left and um, the uh, the reason the other six haven't left as they've fallen asleep you know most of the action in the movie takes place um uh, between horizontally like just supine right in right, right. it's a kind of a sleepy movie but i i'm hoping <laughs> the second movie archangel had an 85 percent walkout rate i actually kept stats on it because i'm a baseball fan and um, I showed that movie again about five years ago and no one walked out so i'm hoping I don't know what to hope for when you're showing an old movie. Uh, well, but maybe, the thing is, maybe at the someone time, would laugh. It would be nice if someone thought oh, something I, there's, funny in it. Yeah, I, yeah. We'll I think see. people are really would are really engaged. I, I have not seen the restoration, but I've been looking at clips and going back in What's time. Good? Yeah, and I think for these people who walked out, it was just too new, too different. That's right. I was 
34 years ahead of them uh, <laughs> or, or 34 years behind them. We weren't in sync anyway, that's for sure. Wow, but, that's amazing. I'm not sure we're in sync. We're going to be in sync now, my audience and me, but uh, we'll see. We'll see. At least it's out there. God bless Ron Mann and his and yeah. films like yeah. for restoring this. And hopefully yeah. he can restore some of my other stuff too. Oh, and, I hope so. Uh, it'll be available. And, uh, and so people can judge for themselves. It's a, it's, uh, I was marked by, I was in some kind of trance when I made it. And uh, I felt very self-assured, mostly. My confidence didn't waver that often. Isn't and that I, what I, artists say that happens to them, writers? I, I think that's have no fantastic. idea why. Watching it, I, I just see nothing but plenty of reasons for confidence to be totally shattered, you know. But it's uh, it's something. <laughs> it's something else, that's for sure. It's, inc it, it's, I mean, you can't say incredibly unique. It is unique in the world. Uh, <laughs> Thanks, Anne. You know, I, I was kind of, I was really taken back to it. And I remember, and it's, I guess you could say it was experimental in a way, but it wasn't because it was being led by your vision and yeah. your vision, has, you know, you stayed true to it. Speaking of which, what do you, uh, you've, you've made so many films, but what are you doing these days? I heard you were teaching. I mean, besides <laughs> accepting awards. Yeah, well, uh, never enough awards. I've, I've been teaching the last few years at U of T and uh, oh. through the oh, pandemic oh. years. But I've taken this year off to concentrate on getting a couple of projects developed. Oh, so I was gambling that they would get off the ground really fast and I wouldn't miss my income from U of T, but they haven't gotten off the ground really fast. They're getting off the ground right in their, uh, on their own schedule. And they, well, yeah. I'm hoping they will, but um, it's created a little, uh, income gap which has made things interesting which is obscuring my vision somewhat but um i i love um my colleagues at u of t so and i like being able to teach but i feel that because i don't have a phd and i'm no professor that i have to keep making films to have credibility as an instructor so this was yeah. a necessary well there you go thing. yeah and they understand that at u of t there um uh, they <clears throat> they let me take a year off without pay and come back. The door is open. It's nice. That's fantastic. It's really, it's really nice. I love it. You know, but I mean, you're, I'm so happy that you're working on new projects. I think that that's so important. And yeah, the, it is. The, and I, I really, I need, I need that just to feel a little bit special or something. I don't know, whatever vein pathos is at work. In I love it. I love it. Need. Thank you so much, Guy. Just such a pleasure to see you again. I really... Yeah, I, I hope um, some folks can come out to see this thing. It looks the way I always wanted it to, and for some reason it couldn't, and now it does. And um, I'm, I'm just, I'm thrilled that you gave me a chance to talk about it a bit. Thank you.